Hi, do you want to hear the latest updates from TensorFlow? Well, you're in the right place. I'm Mark from the TensorFlow team. Stay tuned to find out what's new in TensorFlow, including the latest 2.11 release. We've got updates to attention layers, dtensor, decision forests, and even some tutorials. Let's check it out. You're probably familiar with the Keras optimizers. Maybe you've used Atom or SGD to train your models. Well, starting from TensorFlow 2.9, we have been carefully upgrading this API and introducing new optimizers. In TensorFlow 2.11, we've turned them on by default. Don't worry, your existing code will still work the same for most users, but now you can take advantage of new features like weight decay and a brand new optimizer, AdaFactor. You might find AdaFactor used in NLP or large language models. It uses less memory as it only saves partial information from previous gradients. To recap the migration, in 2.9, we added new optimizers into the experimental namespace. In 2.10, we added the existing optimizers into the legacy namespace. And now in 2.11, we have turned the new optimizers on by default for everyone. You can find more info on the new optimizers in the video description and check out the release notes for more info on how to migrate. Let us know how you go in the comments or file bugs on GitHub. If you're building transformer models, we've made some improvements to the attention APIs that should make your life a little easier. When building an autoregressive model, you need to hide future training data so that your model only sees the outputs generated before the current time step. Otherwise, it can learn from future data that won't be available at inference time. Using a mask, this is called causal masking and is now automatic in Keras. By enabling use causal mask when calling the attention layers, Keras will add a mask that ensures that each location cannot attend to the locations in the future. We've updated our machine translation tutorial to show this layer in action. And you can find a link in the video description or search for it on tensorflow.org. The attention layers now support implicit masking too. When using the embedding layers, enable mask zero to ensure that any zero padded sequences are masked automatically and the mask will be propagated through the model. You can find an example in the same tutorial. Tree-based models are excellent when you're working with tabular data. They're fast to train, accurate and interpretable. Our tree-based framework, TensorFlow Decision Forests, is now version 1.0. This milestone means that TensorFlow Decision Forest is mature, stable, and ready for production use. It also brings some new features, including native support for TensorFlow serving, performance improvements, and a preview of inference APIs for JavaScript and Go. To learn more about TensorFlow Decision Forest, check out the links in the video description. DTensor provides a way for you to distribute the training of your model across devices to improve efficiency, reliability, and scalability. TensorFlow 2.11 packs a whole bunch of dtensor updates to speed up and simplify your distributed architectures. There's a new TF data dataset wrapper to convert your existing datasets so that they emit dtensors. It supports automatically and efficiently packing the tensor components to devices based on the supplied layouts. We've simplified some APIs too. We now have one function call for initializing any accelerator instead of separate APIs for TPU and GPU. And dtensor now supports checkpointing via TF train checkpoint. So you can use the same APIs, the classic TensorFlow training process, and get the benefit of efficient multi-device save and restore without any API change. And we also have a performance boost. We've turned on optimization for GPUs and CPUs that combine independent all reducers. We expect this to speed up small frequent gradient updates across devices. And experimentally, we have seen pretty big improvements while training BERT. TensorFlow 2.11 introduces warm start embedding matrix, a Keras utility function that makes it easy to update your embedding vocabulary and continue training without missing a beat. We've added a new guide to show you how it works. Search for warm start embedding on tensorflow.org. Be sure to check out the new Keras group normalization layer. Not to be confused with batch norm, where stats are computed across the whole batch, or layer norm, where they're computed across the whole layer, Group normalization splits the incoming channels into groups and performs normalization independently within each channel group. Group normalization has been shown to help when training with small batch sizes, where batch norm is less effective. 2.11 also brings a new experimental structured tensor, a collection of structures with the same schema. It's suitable for storing tabular data like data frames or structured data like protocol buffers. And lastly, effective with the upcoming release of TensorFlow 2.12, the TensorFlow 1 estimator and feature column APIs will be considered fully deprecated in favor of their equivalents in Keras. We've updated the docs, and you will soon start seeing runtime warnings. Follow the migration guides to get your code up to date. TensorFlow 2.11 will also be the last version to support Python 3.7. This aligns with NumPy's Python support, so make sure you jump ahead to a more recent Python release to keep using TensorFlow.
On top of all these exciting features, our docs team has been busy with some new and improved tutorials. I told you earlier about some updates to the Keras attention layers that make masking easier when building transformers. To see these in action and learn how to build your own transformer model, check out the newly updated Neural Machine Translation tutorial on tensorflow.org. In this tutorial, you will build a machine translation model from scratch using the Keras APIs. You will learn how attention works and build self and cross attention layers. You'll build up the encoder and decoder layers, train the model, and test it out all in Google Colab. We've also got a brand new tutorial that shows you how to implement question answering in a mobile app. In this tutorial, you'll use TensorFlow Lite to load a pre-trained BERT model into an Android app. Then in the app, you can pass a document and a question and get back answers, all with a native, easy to use API that will be familiar to Android developers. All right, that's enough for this video. We've got more detail on these changes in the 2.11 blog post, so check that out via the link in the video description or head straight to blog.tensorflow.org. To try these new features out, head over to tensorflow.org slash install and grab TensorFlow 2.11 for yourself. Let the team and I know what you think of the latest updates and what else you want to hear about in the comments or over on the TensorFlow forum. We'll be back with another update soon. Make sure you subscribe to stay informed.